Open your Bibles to John 7, where we were last week. We're in a series called Walk in Newness of Life. I'm in John 7. Last week we went in and we, we studied this passage and did a study on it. So I'm just going to read it because I'm after this idea of tributaries tributaries that flow off from the river of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Seventh chapter, I'll find, here it goes. On the last day, you remember that was the tab, Dave, that was tabernacle, and we studied that whole thing last week. You can go to our website, Doctrinal Studies, and you can pick up last week's session. On the last day, the great day of the feast, remember that was the eighth day, which was a high Sabbath in review, Jesus stood and cried out, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost beings will flow rivers, notice that's plural, of living water that's singular. By this he spoke of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, whom those who believe were to receive. When you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day, when you believe, you receive. One of the eight works of the Holy Spirit is to indwell your body. When you believe, you receive. Do you read that? I didn't make this up. <laughs> I didn't make this up. He who believes receives. For the Spirit... When Jesus was speaking this, the Spirit was not yet given by, by what way? In dwelling. Because Jesus was not yet glorified, dying on a cross, being buried, raised from the dead, ascending back, and seated at the right hand of God the Father is Jesus glorified. Right? Yeah, of course. Well, we did an in-depth study of that last time. Right? Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that at the moment of salvation, because we live under the new covenant, you know, that's what that cup told us. This is a cup of new covenant. Because we are new covenant believers, not the old covenant, Passover, old, we're not that. We're new covenant believers. The moment you believe that Jesus died for your sin, was buried and raised from the dead, at that moment, you receive eight works of the Holy Spirit that you can never lose in time and eternity. One of those eight is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, we have gone in great details of all this stuff. Since I've been a Moody, we've been studying this. So if, if, you, if you live out here and you've been coming, you know what I'm talking about. Now, these are eight, eight, eight of these works. The one I'm focusing on today is the indwelling. There's a little pamphlet back there. When you walk out, if you don't have one, you pick one up. It says, it says on there, Salvation 50 Things. Now, it doesn't look like that. It's a different pamphlet, but there's a pamphlet back there on your way out that tells you 50 things you receive at salvation you can never lose in time and eternity. Pick that up and read it, because there are four sections in there, and one of those sections is the eight works of the Holy Spirit at salvation. You should know that because you have them. And you're not exercising them because you didn't know it. I understand that. Paul talks about, you know, unaware or ignorance. Not that you're dumb, it's that you've just never been taught. So you want to pick that up, and what we're talking about now, and each of these eight are going to have this. Each of these eight works are going to have uh, uh, tributaries running off from them. These are eight rivers of one living water. What's the living water? The Holy Spirit. And there are eight of these rivers, and they have, they have all kinds of ministries running off from them. One's adoption, baptism, indwelling, regeneration, you know the list. If you don't, pick a pamphlet up and study it. All right, now what we're going to talk about today, see point number one and point number two? That's home study. I got time to do that. All of that is going to be review. 
So you do that on your own. So let's go to point number three. I was going to do it because almost every week we have new, new visitors, so I was going to go back over that. But I had to do the Eucharist. I wanted to do the Eucharist. And so I got a wonderful speaker coming the second hour to share with us Gideon's ministry. And boys, stay for this because what these guys are doing are lights out. What they're doing with the Bible of, of the Lord is just phenomenal. And you need to be aware of this great ministry that's all over the world. When I was with Billy Graham, when I was with Mr. Graham's ministry, the first thing, and my, my father-in-law was a great Gideon. He was a wonderful Gideon out of the Eastern group. They, they met in Fultondale or someplace like that. I used to go with them. He'd say, you need to see the Gideons, Ron. And boy, they were powerful. When I was working with Billy Graham, he would send me out to different places like New York or Los Angeles, whatever, to try to set up an organization to do a crusade. The first group I went to, before I did anything, wherever I went, was get to Gideon's. I met with the Gideons, and we were looking for statewide connections. I was looking for men of God that had the same passion that we had as the Graham organization, and I found them everywhere I went. I found them from New York City to Los Angeles, California. I found them. And buddy, that was my, and my, that, I salute my father-in-law, Carmen Jones, because he's the one that set me up with that idea. And boy, was that something. The Gideons are phenomenal. And I am so thankful for their ministry. And not just distributing Bibles. These people love God, and they share the gospel of Christ. And uh, they're, they're a wonderful group of people. Well... I found that to be wonderful when I started adding that to my campaign groups. The people would go, well, how did you get everything organized so quick? I said, I'll tell you how. I got the Gideons. Everywhere I go, the first group I hunt is Gideons. And so they could connect me with good, solid churches, and I was off to the run as far as establishing great evangelism. So I want to look at point three because I'm going to look at seven tributaries that run off the indwelling spirit. Now listen to me, this is really important. I'm only going to deal with the ones that Jesus dealt with. Now he introduced this in John 7. Are you with me? John 7, I just read that. John 7, 37 to 39. Okay. Right? Now, just before he goes to the cross at the Last Supper, John 14, 15, and 16, he laid out seven tributaries that's going to run off the indwelling Holy Spirit. And I'm going to give them to you today. Now let me tell you, Paul is going to grab a hold of these seven, and he's going to run more off of them. Tributaries out to tributaries out to tributaries. The Apostle Paul. I'm just dealing with John's recording of Jesus' teaching on it. He listed seven tributaries, and I've got them for you, that run off the ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit. They're dynamite. So this is point number three. Number one, the first tributary that Jesus introduced us to was the permanency of the indwelling Holy Spirit. What does that mean to me? Here's what that means to me. That well inside of you will never go dry. There will always be living water. The Holy Spirit dwells inside your body, and your body is the temple of God, and living water flows from there. The Holy Spirit is that. And out of you for a river, for a river, that river flows out of you. One of the tributaries is that that well will never go dry. I got that? Amen. Never go dry. It's not based on you keeping it. It's based on him giving it to you. 
And this is a wonderful thing. John 14, 16 and 7, 17. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper, a paracletus, another of the same kind, that he may be with you, what? Circle that, forever. Let me tell you, when Jesus says something that's forever, it's forever. It's not for a day, it's not for an hour, it's forever. That is the spirit of truth. That's a nomenclature like Pericles. He's called the helper. That's one title. He's called the spirit of truth. That's another title. You know why that's important? You will never get absolute truth from the world unless it's found in the Bible. They might quote the Bible and have it right. You want absolute truth? Get your head in the word of God. Because the Holy Spirit is only going to deal with absolute truths. He's called the Spirit of truth, absolute truths. You want absolute truths? We all want them, don't we? You know, give it to us in large print and take it away in a small print? Are we not aware of that? <laughs> not God. Not God. God doesn't work that way. The spirit of truth in the world cannot receive because it does not behold him, nor does it know him, because he abides with you, O covenant believers, and will be in you soon, new covenant believers. See, Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet. The Holy Spirit came us beside them. After he dies on that cross and is raised, he's going to come inside you. He's going, to, he, he's, going to, he's going to be seated at the right hand of God the Father, and after that, he's going to send the Holy Spirit, and from that day forward, called Pentecost, Acts 2, he's going to be in you. The moment you believe, you receive. The second tributary of the indwelling Holy Spirit is found in John 14, 26, Teach and Recall. I love this verse. I quote this all the time to my congregation because I'm a teacher. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance, that's recall, all that I said to you. Look, all that he said to me is called the New Testament. Because the New Testament is based on him being the Savior of the body and the head of the church. He is the Savior of the church and the head of the church, and everything he said is now canonized and is there in the scriptures. Teach and recall. The job of the Holy Spirit is to teach and recall. Your job is to learn. His job is to teach and recall. Man, if I thought I had this responsibility... I can't teach and recall. I'd have to try. I'd have to. I'd have to live with you, and even then, it'd be impossible because you wouldn't want to fight with me about it. Who are you to tell me? When the Holy Spirit does it, there's no arguing with him. He's got a powerful way of convicting. and says, "Shut up and listen for a minute," and he does it with love. I mean, how's that possible? You know, the rest of us, we actually actually have to say that. And then, we, then we'd have a war going. Here's the third tributary. Third tri these are all things that are Jesus teaching on the Holy Spirit. Third tributary of the indwelling Holy Spirit is to bear witness of Christ. And he, he uses Christ Jesus. Remember, when he says Christ and uses it first, he's talking about the one of the Old Testament that has been revealed as that person. That's Messiah. Jesus is his humanity title, right? It, listen, he says in, in Matthew that, that, he, that he is the Son of God. He's come to do this kind of stuff, right? Christ Jesus. Is it, listen, the, 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 the angel said, we'll call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins, right? Matthew 121. Matthew 121. So, he, he will bear witness. When the, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds, look how Jesus is emphasizing the Spirit of Truth, 
who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness of me. The Holy Spirit will bear witness of him. And you, he will bear witness to you, and you will bear witness to the world. He will bear witness to you, and you will bear witness to the world. You got that? I, I, I didn't. I just copied it. I, I, didn't, I didn't write it. He will bear witness of me, and you will bear witness also, meaning of Christ, because you have been with me from the beginning. Now, you go like, well, what does that mean? Well, I can tell you what it means for me and you. From the beginning for you and I means Pentecost to rapture. Pentecost to rapture, time period. Because he's going to see, be seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he's going to send the Holy Spirit, and now we're in the advent of the Holy Spirit's ministry till the rapture of the church. Let's see. That, that's recorded in John 15, 26, 27. Fourth, tributary. Convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. I'm into John 16, 7 through 11. I tell you the truth. There it goes again, huh? I tell you the truth. Watch this. It is to your advantage that I go away. Is that not hard to grasp? That we're better off with Jesus not in the world? We are when you sit at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. <laughs> we're better off having the Holy Spirit down here in us and him at the right hand of God for us. Yeah. Now we got it all locked up. This life in Christ is all locked up and securely secured for us. The Holy Spirit in us and Jesus in us and Jesus for us. He will convict the world. He will convict when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And then he explains concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Listen to me. You know what the greatest sin in the world is? Unbelief. Unbelief. That's the one that'll send you to hell. That is the one that'll send you to hell. I mean, sure enough, like hell. The greatest sin is to remain a sinner. Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 8, God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. To remain in that state is the greatest sin. Well, anyhow. Five, he will guide you into all scriptural truth. And when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Look at how many times he's used the word truth with the Holy Spirit. For he will not speak on his own initiative. Isn't that interesting? Third member of Godhead. Listen, if the third member of the Godhead can't play with the word of God on his own, neither can you. Neither can I. Six. The tributary of the indwelling Holy Spirit is to disclose to you what is to come. Now think about that. What is to come? And let me tell you what that is. What is to come the rest of the day? The rest of the week? Rest of the month. Rest of the year. The rest of the decade. The rest of your life. And before you leave, he'll even tell you what's to come after you. And that's something. Now most of us couldn't couldn't predict the rest of the day, let alone what's going to happen after we die. <laughs> The Holy Spirit who lives inside your body every day of every hour of every minute of your life has been sent there to disclose to you what is next on the line, what is next to come.
That gets me excited. That's what I, I, I'm afraid when I go to sleep at night, I won't wake up and still have my feet on the earth. Yes, I'll be in heaven. And for me, well, I think that would be a joyous journey. I am so invested in my time on earth. Like Paul. I reached that place in my life that I'm really content and I look forward every day. I'm afraid. I wake up and I, lo I look over. First thing I do is I look over to see if the clock, if I got a clock next to me. If I do, my feet hit the floor and I'm excited because I know that whatever's to come has already been already been conditioned for my life. All I have to do is have my eyes open, my heart ready. What is to come? That should be exciting to you. And it will be if you will study the Word of God. It should be exciting to you. It's exciting to me. I, I get excited by well, what's what is this day? That's why I started doing a journal. I get back home, I write everything down. It's just I go like, oh wow, that was I could have never planned that day, dear father. I could have never planned that day. <laughs> that was so exciting. And it's not because I'm a preacher. That's my gift, teacher is a gift. It's only one small part of my life. It's not my whole life. My whole life is Christ. Yeah. This is just a small part of it. Well, six. Disclose. Here's seven. The tributary of the indwelling spirit is to glorify Christ from the Christian way of life. That's to walk in newness. Write this down, Romans 6, 4. Walk in newness of life. I'm going to teach you over the, if the coming weeks to come in this class. I'm going to teach you what it means to walk in the newness of life. I'm going to, because we've got that. We've got living, wa living water for life. Here's how it said. Jesus said it in John 16, 14, and 15. He, the Spirit, shall glorify me. He shall take of mine and disclose it to you. Watch what he says now. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and discloses to you. Now listen to what this means. We did current positional truth, but current positional sanctification. Remember that? And what we said is he said, Jesus said that I want to clothe you with new man. I want to clothe your new man. And current positional truth is everything that Christ is, you become. He's a son, you're a son. He's an heir, you're an heir. And the list goes on. We call it the stat, 20 status privileges of who you are in Christ. Stop letting the world tell you and define who you are. You start letting Christ define who you are. Let the Word of God tell you who you are, not the world. And you need to start wearing those clothes. You need to start wearing them. I mean, you've got clothes in your closet that Christ put in your spiritual closet you haven't worn. You should be wearing them. You got them. You ought to be wearing them. Pick that little pamphlet up back there and it'll tell you about them. Where, where are these things? Where are all these disclosures, Cap? Do you ever think about that? He says, "I'm going to disclose." Twice he's told you he's going to disclose stuff to you, right? I don't know where are they, Cap? Yeah, in the Word of God. The things he wants to disclose to you are found in the Bible. It is the library. You know what? And you know specifically what it is. Listen to me. 
right here. The New Testament. Which is the Old Testament brought to fulfillment in the reality of human time.